Medical Science Liaison, shortly known as MSL, is one of the highest paying jobs you can get in pharma, biotech or medical device companies, often with a six-figure salary, even for entry level in some cases. In the US, for example, it's the fourth highest entry level salary for a career. If you don't have any clue what a Medical Science Liaison is, what he or she does, how much money a Medical Science Liaison actually makes, or how to become a Medical Science Liaison, then sit tight because we'll discuss all aspects in this video. First important thing to mention is that Medical Science Liaison is an industry job, not academic. But you could say that the MSL is somewhat equal to being a professor of a company for a given therapeutic field. A liaison is a connecting role, so in essence the MSL forms a bridge between their own company and the therapeutic field he or she is responsible for at large. This means it's a job role that stays very close to the scientific aspects of the field, but without actually performing research. Basically, a medical science liaison comes down to being the external face of the medical affairs department of a pharma biotech or medical device company. Second very important thing to remember is that this is not, I repeat, not a sales position and moreover you need to be cautious in your role as an MSL not to promote too much. The job also comes with being able to know, recognize and apply regulations. As an example, you will never ever find or should not ever find a medical science liaison simultaneously present with a medical sales representative in the same physician's office. So in essence, the medical science liaison is innovation focused, but historically though, the MSL role was first described in 1967 by a company named Upjohn to describe a medical sales representative with a more in-depth knowledge of the scientific aspects. While you might have heard these stories about salesmen taking doctors and their wives or even families out for very fancy dinner sometimes, so they would be enticed to keep prescribing that particular company's drug or keep using that particular medical equipment instead of that of the competitions. Well, sounds a bit like indirect bribing now, doesn't it? That's why the Sunshine Act came into place recently in the US to increase transparency on what physicians actually receive as gifts or benefits from pharma, biotech or medical device companies. Other countries besides US are quickly following to implement this as well. So what are the day-to-day -day functions of a medical science liaison? Well, they can vary, vary according to the phase of the company or even the phase of a given project. But in general, the most typical tasks that MSLs are involved in are engaging in scientific discussions with KOLs or key opinion leaders. Now, what are key opinion leaders? These are experts in their field. For example, a high profile clinical researcher in oncology from a given university. He or she has a big influence on other doctors in the field because their opinion really matters as an expert opinion. Communicate, educate and or provide training to different audiences using high level presentations and the audience can be those KOLs or other healthcare providers of any kind or people from your own company like the medical sales team where you educate them about the product they are trying to bring to market to those hospitals, physicians and patients. Another very important role that the MSL is involved in is keeping up with the latest developments in your field by attending seminars, conferences and over there are actually great opportunities to interact with those KOLs. So you definitely need to be aware what the competition is doing in order to report this back to your own company. Actually, there's this book that's sort of the Bible for MSLs or those looking to become one, written by Dr. Samuel Dreyer, the chairman of the board of the MSL, Medical Science Liaison Society. And in the beginning of his book, he goes deeper into what the MSL actually is and does. So if you ever plan on going into this job, I think this book will really help you out. There's a link in the description below, so welcome to check that out. Meanwhile, also make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to be in the loop on other jobs you can get with a biomedical or other life science degree. And don't forget to hit that bell button or you will miss out. Now, what are some of the essential skills you should develop or have in order to become a medical science liaison? 
Obviously, you need excellent communication skills and you should be good with people and know how to build and manage a network. I've mentioned the importance of networking before in another video, and to do this online, for instance, LinkedIn is a good place to start. You also need to be able to absorb, process and structure complex medical and scientific information and then present it adapted to the level of the audience you are targeting. Now, how do you become a medical science liaison? What are the requirements? Well, first of all, you need an advanced degree like MD, PharmD or PhD. Historically, it were mostly PharmDs and MDs, but nowadays more and more PhDs become the minimum norm requirement for becoming an MSL. There are some cases where people with a master's got into an MSL role, but these are rather exceptions. What might also help is to proactively contact people who are already in the MSL field, may it be at conference or such, or find them on LinkedIn and try to get into their inner circle and increase your chances of landing an MSL job. So what might give you an edge perhaps in solicitations? Well, largely depends on the company. Some prefer recruiting people with a more in-depth knowledge. For instance, doing additional postdocs will give you more experience in the given therapeutic field. So that might give you an edge compared to other applicants. Some prior industry experience might also benefit you, perhaps in medical affairs or clinical, but this is not written in stone. It's not a necessity. And having a broad network already could also give you an edge. Now, some side notes, smaller companies might more easily hire MSLs without experience and largely dependent on the company, the MSL role might indeed lean a bit more closer to sales instead of innovation, but this, this is really company dependent. Once the day comes, you actually decide to go for the medical science liaison job. I recommend reading up on it with the book I mentioned before. And there's some other books that I mentioned in the description below. So check that out after this video. Now let's talk numbers. How much money does a medical science liaison actually make? Well, payscale.com reports a mean yearly salary of 130,000 US dollars in the United States. The MSL Society themselves perform annual surveys across the globe, but you need to be or become a member of the MSL Society to get full access to all data. However, they do show a range of salaries in the US according to years of experience. This goes from 144,000 with less than one year of experience all the way up to 199,000 with over 15 years of experience. Well, this is US, so I did some further research on YouTube and other resources and came across a guy talking about the MSL role in Europe and he reports lower salaries than US, but still very, very decent pay. Something like 50K Euro, but as a starting salary, of course. Also note that the salaries can vary according to company, according to the country, according to which skills you bring to it, according to how good you can negotiate, according to your prior experience. Again, check out the description below for links to all these resources I mentioned here. Now let's summarize with going over the pros and cons of this MSL job. Pro, close to science, especially clinical research, but not numbers heavy or analytically heavy. It's also a high paying job. It's a flexible job, often the potential to work from home, but you might be required to travel now and then, which could also be a con. It's a fast growing job role. There's increasing demand for medical science liaisons from industry. Cons, well, high entry threshold. An advanced degree is minimally required and more and more the PhD becomes a standard. It's typically not a job you can get into directly after your studies, but there are exceptions of course. And sometimes someone with perhaps even a bit more experience can beat you during solicitations. And then the traveling might be a con if your family situation, for instance, doesn't allow it. So perhaps there's one more relevant question. Do I myself consider the medical science liaison as a career? Yes, I'm definitely considering this future job role, especially because of the proximity to the scientific aspect of things. But hey, we'll see where it all goes. I don't have a glass ball to look into the future also, right? As always, Highly interesting and relevant links in the description in this video. 
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching and until the next one, cheers.